This is the second in a two-part video series where I discuss High Dynamic Range Imaging, or HDRI. In the first video, I showed how to use the Ricoh Theta SC camera to take exposure bracketed 360 degree photographs. I then demonstrated how to merge these 360 degree photographs to generate high dynamic range images. In the second video, I'll show you how to use these HDR images to light your blender scenes. These images can help you to produce lighting that is similar to real world environments. For this video, I've photographed and generated HDR images for three different lighting environments. A nighttime environment with a street light, a daytime shaded environment in a gazebo, and a daytime environment in bright sunlight. Each of these lighting environments has their own challenges. Let's start with the nighttime environment. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.80. In this Blender scene, I have a robot, a reflective sphere, and a hammer. We're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine, so I'll switch to the Render tab and select Cycles. To see what this looks like with the current lighting, I'll press Z and select Rendered. We're not going to be using the light source to light the scene, so I'll select it in the Outliner and press X to delete it. Now the only thing that is lighting the scene is the gray background color. If I switch to the World tab and change the color to black, then nothing is lighting the scene. To add the HDR image, I'll click the button next to the color and select Environment Texture. Then I'll click the Open button, navigate to the HDR image, and select it. An HDR image will typically have an EXR or an HDR file extension. In this nighttime image, the strongest light comes from this street light. If I rotate the view to look down, you can see the tripod that was holding the camera. This view is useful because we can see what kind of shadow the tripod cast in the real environment. In this case, it's a sharp shadow. So when everything is set up, our Blender objects should also cast sharp shadows. Now I'll add floor and background objects to show you what a simple scene looks like when the HDR image lights the scene, but the HDR image is not directly visible in the scene. We have sharp shadows like the tripod. The reflections in the sphere look nice and it includes a reflection of the street lamp. So this HDR image gives us good nighttime lighting. You can change the brightness of the HDR image by adjusting this strength value. If I increase the strength to 1.5, it brightens the scene up a little and it still looks like nighttime. The HDR image contains a wide range of brightness values, but I didn't do anything to calibrate the absolute brightness of the image. For example, I didn't measure the brightness of the sidewalk under the street lamp and then try to match that brightness here. When we look at the next HDR image, which is a daytime image, I'll show you a method that I use for setting the brightness. But for this nighttime HDR image, I'll simply adjust the brightness value to my liking. If you want to rotate the HDR image, then switch to the Shading Workspace. In the bottom window, select World. This is the node for the HDR image. Now add a Mapping node by pressing Shift-A and select Vector and then Mapping. Connect the Vector Output to the Vector Input. Then press Shift-A and select Input and then Geometry. Connect the position output to the vector input. Now in the window up here, I'll switch to rendered view by pressing Z and then select rendered. Currently, the shadow of the robot is on this wall. When I change the Z rotation value, the background image will rotate and the direction of the shadows will change. Now the shadow of the robot is on this wall. I'm going to set the value back to zero. Now we'll look at the scene when the HDR image is directly visible in the scene. So I'll switch back to the layout workspace and remove the floor and background objects. 
You might notice that the blender objects aren't cast in any shadows. That's because there is no surface to cast the shadows onto. But we can add a shadow catcher, which is a transparent surface where only the shadow can be seen. To do that, press Shift A and add a mesh plane. I'm going to scale it up in size and move it so that it catches the whole shadow. To turn this plane into a shadow catcher, I'll switch to the Object tab, open the Visibility section, and add a check mark next to Shadow Catcher. The Shadow Catcher is now transparent, and you can see that we have sharp shadows which are the same type of shadows that were cast by the tripod. One thing to notice about the Shadow Catcher is that even though it's transparent when you look at it directly, its reflections are not transparent. If you look at the sphere, the Shadow Catcher looks gray. To make this more noticeable, I'll change its color to a light green color. Now it's very noticeable in the sphere, the hammer, and the claws of the robot. If none of your blender objects are reflective, then this should not be a problem. In case you do have reflective objects, I'll show you some things that you can do. The easiest thing to do is to go back to the Object tab and in the Ray Visibility section, remove the check mark from next to Glossy. Now the Shadow Catcher does not show up in the reflections. It can also be a good idea to remove the check mark from next to Diffuse because under bright lighting conditions, the Shadow Catcher can reflect its color onto non-glossy objects. Disabling Glossy and Diffuse works well for many cases, but there are some drawbacks to this approach. Not only is the Shadow Catcher not seen in the reflections, but the shadows are not seen in the reflections either. So if you look in the sphere, you don't see the shadow cast by the sphere. I'll enable Glossy and Diffuse again so that you can see the shadow. Here's the shadow cast by the sphere. I'll disable them again. Another drawback of this approach is that there may be some things visible in the reflections that you don't want. If you look here, you can see the reflection of the tripod. Also, part of the hammer is not on the sidewalk. So this method works well for the claws on the robot. It works pretty well for the hammer because it's not as glossy as the sphere. But this method does not work well with the sphere because the shadows can't be seen, the tripod is visible, and the hammer is not on the sidewalk. So if my blender scene only included the robot and the hammer and not the sphere, then simply disabling Glossy and Diffuse is a reasonable solution. Another thing that you can do is to keep Glossy and Diffuse enabled and change the color of the shadow catcher to match the background. This can work well if the HDR image under the sphere looks like a single color. The reflection of the shadows can be seen in the sphere, the tripod is not visible, and it looks like the hammer is on the sidewalk. But if I move the sphere to the left, then none of the details near the edge of the curb can be seen in the reflections. The last method that I want to show you is to add a non-glossy object between the glossy objects and the shadow catcher. So I've added a small table and put the hammer and sphere on top of it. Now the sphere is reflecting the top of the table along with the shadows. If I change the color of the shadow catcher to a light green again, you can see that it's still visible in some of the reflections. So with the shadow catcher selected, I'll switch to the Object tab and remove the check marks from next to Glossy and Diffuse. Now things are looking pretty good. The next thing to do is to set up the camera view. So I'll press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, I'll press N to open the sidebar, select the View tab, and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then I'll press N again to close the sidebar. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. I'm going to rotate the view to put the blender objects on the sidewalk. Next, we're going to set the focal length of the camera. To do that, find the camera in the outliner and select it. Then switch to the Object Data tab and change the focal length to 35mm, which seems to work well for the camera that I used. Now I'm going to position the background. 
Next, I'll select the robot, the hammer, the sphere, and the table, and then move the objects into position. This looks a little too bright to me, so I'll select the World tab and reduce the brightness value to 1.2. Now I'll render the image. I'm using 128 render samples. I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished. The HDR image did a good job producing lighting for this nighttime scene. Now let's turn this into a daytime scene. So I'll load an HDR image of a daytime scene taken in a gazebo. If I rotate the view to see the tripod, then you'll notice that it's not casting any sharp shadows. That's because the roof of the gazebo is blocking the direct view of the sun. So the lighting for the scene is indirect sunlight from all sides. Since the tripod is not casting any sharp shadows, then we shouldn't expect the robot, the hammer, the sphere, or the table to cast any sharp shadows either. And they don't. All the shadows are very soft, and they're even hard to see. But they are there. I'll hide the shadow catcher so that you can see the difference. Now I'll turn the shadow catcher on again. The first thing that we're going to do with the HDR image is to set its strength. In the first video, I mentioned that after I finished taking the 360 degree photos, I moved the tripod out of the way and used my smartphone to take pictures of the area where the tripod was standing. Here is one of those pictures. It's not an HDR image, it's just a typical JPEG photo. The tripod was standing in this area. I'm going to use this photo as a brightness reference. So I'll pick an area of the photo where it's not too bright or saturated. I'm going to use this area of the floor, and so I'll zoom in on it. Now I'll find the same area in the blender scene. The colors of the floor don't match exactly, but what we're interested in is the brightness. When the strength is set to 1, the floor seems too dark. When the strength is set to 2, it seems too bright, so I'm going to use 1.5. I used the Ricoh Theta SC camera to take the 360 degree images, and I used my smartphone camera to take the standard image. Even though these cameras have different characteristics, I can still get reasonable results using this method. Next, I'll add floor and background objects to show you what a simple scene looks like when the HDR image lights the scene, but the HDR image is not directly visible in the scene. I'll hide the shadow catcher for this scene since we have a floor. To prevent the shadow catcher from being rendered, I'll open this drop-down menu and select the button that looks like a camera. Now when I click the camera button, it will prevent the shadow catcher from being rendered. Now I'll render the image. This is what the rendered image looks like. We have soft lighting with nice reflections in the sphere, the hammer, the orange parts of the robot, and the eyes. So this HDR image gives us good daytime lighting in a shaded area. Next I'll remove the floor and background objects and re-enable the shadow catcher. The HDR image and the photo that I took with my smartphone are both images of the same scene taken inside a gazebo. So we're going to light the scene with the HDR image and use the smartphone picture for the background. The smartphone picture is not an HDR image, it's just a standard photograph, but that's okay because we're not using it to light the scene. The reason that I'm not making the HDR image directly visible in the Blender scene is because its resolution is too low. The Ricoh Theta SC camera that I used to take the 360 degree images produces an image that is 5,376 pixels wide, but these pixels are spread out over 360 degrees. We can only see a small portion of it in the Blender scene. On the other hand, the picture that I took with my smartphone is not a 360 degree image and the entire width of the image will be used. So this image will look better in the background.
So you may be wondering why earlier in this video I used the HDR image of the nighttime scene in the background. That's because the lower resolution of the HDR image did not seem very noticeable to me, but in this daytime scene, the difference in sharpness between the blender objects and this chair and fence in the background is pretty noticeable. To use the smartphone image in the background, we first need to hide the HDR image. To do that, I'll switch to the Render tab, open the Film section, and add a check mark next to Transparent. Now the HDR image is no longer seen in the background, but it's still lighting the Blender objects, and its reflections can still be seen. Now I'll switch to the Compositing workspace and add a check mark next to Use Nodes. To be able to see what we're doing here, we need to add a Viewer node and render the image. To add a Viewer node, I'll press Shift-A and select Output, and then Viewer. Then I'll connect the image output to the image input. Next I need to render the image, and so I'll set up a couple render options. To make it render faster, I'll set the number of render samples to 10. Now I'll switch to the Output tab to set the resolution. The height to width ratio of the rendered image should match that of the smartphone picture. One way to do this is to set the resolution values to match the picture. In this case it's 5312, by 2988. This will ensure that the height to width ratio is correct, but I don't want my rendered image to be this large. So I'll set the percentage value to 35%. Now I'll render the image. I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished. I don't need the render window, so I'll close it. Since we added a viewer node, we can now see the rendered image in this window. To zoom out on the rendered image, I can press V. To zoom in, press Alt V. Next, I'll add the smartphone picture to the background. To do this, I'll press Shift A and select Input and then Image. Then I'll click the Open button and select the picture. Now we need to combine this picture with the rendered image. So I'll press Shift A and select Color, and then Alpha Over. Then I'll connect the Image node to the top image input, and the Render node to the bottom image input. Then I'll connect this image output to both the Composite image input and the Viewer image input. There's one more node that I'm going to add. So I'll press Shift A and select Distort, and then Scale. I'll drop this on the connection coming out of the Image node. Then I'll change the type to Render Size. This will scale the image to match the render size. Now I'll switch back to the Layout workspace. The 3D window doesn't show the picture that I added, which makes it hard to set the size and position of the Blender objects. So we'll also add the picture as a background image to the camera. To do that, First, make sure that you're in camera view. You can press zero on the number pad to toggle camera view on and off. Now I'll select the camera from the outliner. Then I'll switch to the object data tab. Next, I'll add a check mark next to background images. I'll also expand this section. Next, I'll click the add button. Now I'll click this drop down menu and select the same picture that we previously just added. The background is for reference only it doesn't change how the image is rendered. You'll notice that the shadow catcher blocks the background image, and so I'll select it and temporarily hide it. Next, I'll zoom, pan, and rotate to put this into the position that I want. Now I'm going to rotate the HDR image until it is looking in the same direction as the background photo. The center of the background photo is looking to the left of the chairs. To see the HDR image, I need to disable the background image. Then I need to disable transparent. To rotate the HDR image, I'll switch to the shading workspace. These are the nodes that we set up earlier that allow us to rotate the background. Now I'll press 0 on the number pad for camera view. I'll rotate it by changing the rotation Z value. I know that from doing this before, that 105 degrees is pretty close. 
you can see one of the chairs on the right. Now I'll switch back to the Layout workspace and enable Transparent. I'll also enable the background images. Next I'll get ready to render this image, so I'll unhide the shadow catcher and then change the number of render samples to 128. Now I'll render the image. I'll pause the video until it's done. This is the rendered image. The HDR image did a very good job generating lighting and reflections that look realistic for this scene. Now let's turn this into a daytime scene in bright sunlight. When I took the 360 degree photos of this scene, it included a direct view of the sun. This resulted in the image being saturated or clipped at the location of the sun. Even with the camera set to the fastest shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, the sun was far too bright. So I'll show you how to add sunlight in Blender. But first we'll set up the scene. So I'll switch to the World tab and open the HDR image that I'm going to use. Previously, to set the strength value, we compared the HDR image with a picture that I took with my smartphone. To save time, I'm just going to set it to 0.7, which I know works well for this HDR image. And like before, I took a picture of the scene using my smartphone. To put it in the background, I'll switch to the compositing workspace and select it in the image node. Now I'll switch back to the layout workspace. Next, with the camera selected, I'll switch to the Object Data tab and set the background image to the picture that I just added. Now I'll temporarily hide the shadow catcher. Next, I'll zoom and pan to make sure the Blender objects are in the sunlight. Now I'll unhide the shadow catcher. The shadows that are cast by the Blender objects should be sharp since this scene has direct sunlight. But you'll notice that the shadows are actually very soft. That's because the sun is saturated or clipped in the 360 degree photographs that I took. Therefore, the HDR image doesn't contain the very bright sun levels. So we're going to add a sun light source. Typically, when you use a sun light source, the position of the light source doesn't matter. The thing that does matter is the direction that the light source is pointing. But I'm going to show you a method for setting the direction of the sun light source that does require the light source to be in the right position. To get started with this, I'll press 0 on the number pad to toggle out of camera view. Now I'll select the Render tab and disable Transparent. I'm going to start with the HDR image in its default position, and so I'll switch to the Shading workspace and change the Z rotation value to 0 degrees. Then I'll switch back to the Layout workspace. We're going to add the light source at the world origin. If your cursor is not already at the origin, then press Shift S and select Cursor to World Origin. Your Blender objects also need to be near the world origin, so if they're not, then move them close. Now I'll add a sun light source by pressing Shift A, and then I'll select Light, and then Sun. Now zoom out until the Blender objects are much too small for the scene. Then rotate the view until the sun in the HDR image is aligned with the world origin. Next we're going to move the light source down on either the center x-axis or the center y-axis, whichever one is sloping down at the steepest angle. In this case it's the y-axis, which is the green line. So I'll press G, then Y, then I'll move it down near the bottom of the window. Next, we're going to move it up on the z-axis until it crosses the center axis that we didn't use, which in this case is the red x-axis. So I'll press G, then Z, then drag it up until it crosses the x-axis. Next, we'll move it along the axis that I haven't used yet, which is the x-axis. So I'll press G, then X, then I'll move it until it's aligned with the origin. If I rotate the view, you can see that the sun light source is located between the world origin and the sun in the HDR image. Next, I'm going to point the sun light source at the world origin. When I do this, 
The direction of the light source should be very close to the direction of the sunlight in the HDR image. So I'll press Shift A and select Empty and then Plane Axis to put an empty object at the world origin. Then I'll select the light source, switch to the Object Constraints tab, and add a Track to constraint. For the target, I'll select the empty object that I just added. Then for the To value, I need to select minus Z, and for the Up value, I need to select Y. Now the Sun light source is pointing at the world origin. If I rotate back to the Blender object and zoom in, you can see that the objects are now casting sharp shadows. Next, I'll set the color and strength of the sunlight. So I'll switch to the Object Data tab and change the color to a hex value of FF EC E0. You'll probably want to experiment with the strength value, but I'm going to set it to 7. Next, I'm going to switch to the Render tab and re-enable Transparent. Now I'll switch back to the camera view and render the image. I'll pause the video until it's done. The lighting and reflections for this scene look very good. If you decide that you want to rotate the HDR image, then when you do so, it will no longer be aligned with the sun light source. So I'll show you how to keep them aligned. So I'll press 0 on the number pad to toggle out of camera view, and then I'll disable transparent again. To rotate the HDR image, I'll switch to the shading workspace. The rotations are done on the z-axis, and so I'll rotate it 90 degrees. Now I'll switch back to the layout workspace. To keep the sunlight source aligned, I'll press 7 on the number pad for top view and zoom out until I can see the light source. It's right here. Next, I'll rotate the sun around the center point. To do that, I'll open this drop-down menu and change the pivot point to 3D cursor. The 3D cursor should be at the world origin. Now I'll press N to open the sidebar and switch to the Item tab. When I rotate, I need to rotate by the same amount that I rotated the HDR image, but I'm going to rotate it in the opposite direction. I rotated the HDR image by 90 degrees, and so I'll rotate the sun by minus 90 degrees. So now, while watching the Z rotation value, I'll press R to rotate and rotate the sun until it's about minus 90 degrees. And I can't just enter a rotation value here, because you'll notice that it's also changing the location values as I rotate. Now if I rotate the view, we can see that the world origin, the sun light source, and the sun in the HDR image are all aligned. Next, I'll re-enable transparent, press 0 on the number pad for camera view, and render the image again. This is the rendered image. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.